Well, folks, as you can see, we have Aristo again today, and uh, the video uh, for the 24th of October 2017 uh, is entitled Rabbit Hole Deeper Than We Think. Aristo, take it away. Hi, Ron, and hi, people out there. Um, and once again, the title is kind of cliche. You see it all the time on these conspiracy sites and stuff, but... Um, I just want to approach this from another angle. Now, let it be said once again that this is completely unscripted. I do not know what I'm going to say. There's a cloud of possibilities out there that I may draw upon, and I will do my best to just keep you entertained, those of you who are interested at least. But entertainment in this case is not bullshit like it is in the mainstream. Um, let's say I, 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 this is engaging. You know, any, any fairy tale you might read, any of those science fiction stories or horror stories or whatever out there, they don't hold a candle to the real deal. However, the ending, you should know, is indeterminate. It is not like, you know, you, you it it's behooves us, shall we say, to consider that when Hollywood has a script, it will play around with good, happy endings, and usually it will make the happy endings kind of cheesy and, and not so believable, um, or something that, that's trivialized in a way, you know, so they live happily ever after, they go off into the sunset, blah, 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 what's there to say, you know. Um, and again, pardon any sounds, any background noises you may hear, because, you know, it's uh, there's a national holiday, uh, or at least a local holiday, the city where I live, the patron saint of the city, so they got the Air Force and planes coming around, and helicopters, so, you know, it's not a war zone. Um, everything's fine. It's just going to get a little bit noisy. And I'm going to have to read, you know, if I had a green screen behind me, we could have all kinds of bombings and stuff like they do on CNN. But uh, right now, you're just going to see plain white with a few shadows. So pardon that. <laughs> we'll try to make it a little more interesting than just the plain white that's in the background here. So as I was saying, Hollywood will give you a script. And as many conspiracy type theories said, um, Hollywood is, has a lot of magical occult symbolism. The Hollywood is the wand of the magician, shall we say. Uh, so it's meant to enchant you. It's the land of enchantment. Enchantment means basically drugging you or hypnotizing you. You know, that's a nice, nice word, basically. The modern word is hypnosis, mind control, um, drugging, psychic drugging, you know, take your pick. So all of this is known in the, among the conspiracy crowd. However, you don't have to draw a big ass conspiracy to know that, look, man, every, every historically, every totalitarian type regime would use uh, a propaganda system, a system of propaganda. And in the Roman Empire, it was the Christian religion toward the end of the empire and in the subsequent Byzantine Empire. Uh, the upper classes keep their authority either militarily, again, the Roman Empire used a very strong military. Um, when the empire became really big, they knew that a military wasn't good enough. They had to control the hearts and minds of the people. One single religion would do that. I don't know how long it, it took them to come up with this. Eventually, the religion became a business unto itself. It became infiltrated by other factions. Uh, and then it, it, it became... Uh, torn apart and, and the factions were opposed with each other, but then they all work toward a common good. Uh, the rabbit hole essentially is inverted. That's the cool thing about it, or the interesting thing. Cool thing. There, there is nothing cool about it, but it's interesting in the sense that it's inverted. Now, how is it inverted? Well, our perspective is basically upside down. Right is wrong, up is down. We've said it a lot before, legal is illegal, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Our perspective is messed up really bad. So what we think is the rabbit hole is actually normality. We're in the rabbit hole. The rabbit hole is the normal world we think, you know. So we say, oh, it can't be this way. The world doesn't work that way. The world works another way. And that's the problem. And now it's fashionable for people to emulate scientists and go, where's the proof? Where's the beef, you know, where, where's the tangible? It's like, look, if, if it's mind control, there is no proof. Your, your mind is controlled. So you can't really go that route. And then again, 
here comes Aristo saying these things, and then five other, you know, Johnnies or, or Billies or, or Jeanettes come out and say wholly different things. And you got a hodgepodge of things bombarding you. So how do you know which is true? Well, look at this situation. The point is not who is the one who's giving you the truth, because then you have to ask yourself, who am I? That's the important thing. Ask yourself, who am I in all of this? What am I in all of this? In other words, what's my role? Is, is it my role to just sit there and shop for truth? Because we have become consumers. See, the rabbit hole, the true rabbit hole, what we consider reality, the matrix. The matrix is the rabbit hole. Let's call it that. Now, the um, reality has given us roles as human beings. We are consumers. Um, Henry Kissinger called most people, the human population, eaters, useless eaters. So, but however, we have been brainwashed into becoming useless eaters, or useless is the euphem they're euphemism, but you see, we've been led into this cul de sac that's justifying our demise. Okay, so one thing we are, shall we say, guilty of is passivity, it's complacency. And everybody screams about that, you know, we're just complacent, it's complacent. You're all complacent. We're complacent. Get up off of butts and do something, you know. And I've, I've commented on this before. So complacency is not, again, I'm not expressing it in terms of physical action or the, the desire. Not, it's mental action. You know, this is where it starts. If you're lazy, I mean, some of the uh, intellectuals can start off as lazy people. But because they need to do something, they do it with their minds. So this culture is dumbed down. That's another aspect of the rabbit hole, we're dumbing down. And so dumbing down means it's probably harder in some cases to take physical, to take mental action than it is to take physical action. Except for the mental action that somebody helps you in taking, assists you. And so the system assists people in taking even mental action. What is that mental action? Well, if you go on, you know, there, there's bullies on YouTube, right? Or, or bullies on, on Facebook, or bullies on social media, trolls. And then there's just belligerent people who may not actually be trolls, but who are opinionated. Take me, for example. So, <laughs> you know, if, if I go and, and even as a child or whatever, you know, I, I sit there and I have an opinion and I, I, I thought about it, I, I researched it, so it's more than just an opinion to me, it's something special. And then wherever I go, people shoot it down. That hurts. So my opinion is shot down everywhere. So I go, I have to learn how to stand up for myself. I have to learn how to, but I can't just get into fist fights all the time. You know, that doesn't work. My opinion it becomes secondary to, to the fist. So I have to learn how to, the art of rhetoric. It's an ancient motive. I mean, back in the Mediterranean world and Greek Roman uh, period, uh, people, the wealthy especially, would go and, and to special teachers and learn the art of rhetoric, the art of convincing somebody that their opinion was the truth. To the point that in ancient Athens, there were a few of them that said, man is the measure of all things, meaning that the truth is relative. Whatever I, if I'm good at convincing you that the sky is red when it's blue, you know, then the sky is red because you are convinced and reality is internal. So whatever I create, as your reality, that is your reality. So today, people have made a science of that, have made a science of rhetoric. Rhetoric isn't really just the art of logical convincing, it's the art of mind control. Um, so the thing is that we, as so-called normal people in the rabbit hole, um, we as wabbity wascals, shall we say, <laughs> will not want to be beat up by the bully, so we're going to learn how to argue, how to debate. A lot of people do. So you go online and they have really, okay, these are the principles of logic. And how do I know people do this? Because I hear the terms more. You know, uh, there was somebody had, had trouble. I mean, I'm depressed, I'm going to kill myself. Get cognitive therapy. You know, I've seen it like several times. People say, get cognitive, you need cognitive therapy. What is that? I've never heard that before. And you can look it up on Wikipedia or something, because I'm sure many people are. Cognitive therapy has nothing to do with emotional healing or spiritual healing 
or basically healing the soul or whatever, cognitive therapy is uh, basically reprogramming the mind. That is healing these days. So we're back to the computer paradigm of what we are. The transhumanist agenda is actually within our normalcy far more than, than we probably think. Uh, because we think it's something invasive or terrible. No, no, the, 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 the thing is, this is sneaky, very, very sneaky. This is what they call normalcy bias, which is basically you get used to anything. Now, these biases, again, I've been looking this up, you know, there's like more than 100 and 150 biases. I can't even list half of them, you know, but, uh, or anything. And just bias this, bias that, bias the other about how we are prejudiced. And again, we are conditioned with all of the racism and sexism and thisism and thatism to basically hear the word prejudice and freak out that this is a bad thing. So we are prejudiced uh, in, in a whole bunch of ways uh, whenever somebody throws um, something that challenges our worldview, our comfort zone, our sacred cows. And, the th and it's become fashionable to be a sacred cow kicker just like you or me. And so the thing is, yeah, let's kick other people's sacred cows or let's get our sacred cows kicked, but why don't we consider, you know, why are we like this in the first place? Why do we have these biases? And there are a few researchers who have said that these biases are there uh, uh, for an evolutionary purpose because we can't sit around and prove everything all the time and do research. Sometimes we have to make quick decisions. Or, to sit or take shortcuts. So these biases are there in order to basically um, cut corners. Again, this is all about analytic thinking. This has nothing to do with intuition. There is no recognition of intuition because computers don't have it. The transhumanist agenda and the psychopath, even though the psychopath can easily be intuitive in their own way, they don't recognize feeling. They don't recognize emotion as a perceptual mechanism, shall we say, or a process of perception. My emotions are not just reactions. They can easily be ways of me discerning my reality. I don't feel good about it. This makes me angry. That makes me sad. I feel the pain over there. These are perceptions. They're telling us something about reality. And yet, they are being called away from our psyches. They are being weeded out, shall we say, because we are promoting these other things. Our brainwashing, our, our training in the rabbit hole is what we call normality. The rabbit hole will get deeper and deeper and deeper and it will always be normal. That's where you know you're being fucked if you, if you have any sense of memory of how things work. But that's going to be reprinted you know if you a lot of movies let's put it this way to the extent that this is going on this is one example and so why in some old movies and i don't have any examples but i have seen uh cartoons and, and stuff where there's chemtrails in the past there were no chemtrails in, in cartoons or whatever you know for the past i don't know what how many years the, the earlier ones didn't have it Oh, it's become fashionable to just, it's a symbol, a plane with a trail behind it, but planes don't leave trails, not gigantic ass trails that spread the big clouds that cover the sky. It doesn't happen, you know, but that's not the point of this discussion. The point is that it's become normal to see, uh, you know, oh, there's an old movie from the 50s and oh, look, there's a plane in the background, it's leaving a trail. That's been added later. This is how insidious this is. It's been added later because that little detail counts. It affects people's subconscious. These little details, who knows how many of them there are. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is going on. I mean, conspiracy just means people all get together uh, away from the public eye and figure something out for some reason. And usually it's not in the best interest of other people. And that happens all the time. It happens in the school playground where one clique starts gossiping about another clique or when one person wants to screw their former friend or in the job place when somebody spreads a rumor about somebody. All of these are really conspiracies. They're people getting together, planning to undermine someone or something. In fact, you might say that, that what the police do is a conspiracy. 
they get together and they, you know, and then they and they want to trap a criminal. They conspire against the criminal. Yeah, sure, it's legal and they're justice and blah blah blah, and they're the good guys. But what if they want to frame somebody? What if one which they do? <laughs> which they do, as you say. You know, so this happens, at, and if not in the U.S., it happens in other countries. You know, so conspiracies are a fact, and conspiracies are actually are a fact of history, and we are trained to think that it's wacky to even consider them, or that Hollywood is just a, a business run by greedy people who just want to make money, and that's all that matters, and and everything else is legit. Maybe a few fat asses in there, or no way to want to shame anybody, but a few. You know, and it's a euphemism, it's not anything physical. So a, a few hogs, shall we say, a few pigs will molest women in Hollywood, but nobody, the pedophilia is of course off in the corner. Uh, and, uh, you know, lesser of two evils, shall we say, maybe, I don't know, or, or something maybe I would expect from, a, uh, you know, some, some slimy character in Hollywood. It's a cliche, the casting couch, of course. Oh yeah, we know that happened, it's normal. It sucks, but it's normal. Pedophilia, it sucks, but it's normal. You know, citizen abuse, whatever, it sucks, but it's normal. You know, pretty, pretty soon cannibalism will suck, but it's normal. What can we do? Oh, yeah, there's a food shortage. We got, just got to eat our neighbors now. So, you know, and, and all of these things are going on. Oh, what do we do? Stop. That's what I would do, that's what I do, that's the best thing in my opinion that you can do is stop asking yourself what you can do. I know in other videos I've said, ask yourself what you can do. No, well, well you know, people just flip out. Every time somebody gives any legitimate advice, most people cannot follow it because there is a counter current. There is something else that is subliminal through the field, somebody reacts, almost automatically, or it's been taken into account, that sabotages it. Or maybe there's, there's a subliminal something where people are conditioned to resist any kind of urge for freedom. So, you know, out of fear or some other thing. Even this thing about, oh, let's all face the positive. I've seen that again, you know, keep, keeps coming on occasion. It's not as fashionable as it was. However, you know, there's still, oh, we can't look at the negative. If you want to solve a problem, you look at the solution. You know, you don't look at the problem. Well, this is looking at the solution. The problem is just the background, okay? So, so we are kind of, shall we say, nearsighted. So we can't see what's in front of our faces, which is a, a path of solution. Because we are not in reality. We are in normality. I have I've, I've come into the habit of lately or through the last several years to basically define the matrix as normality. And the matrix is normal, it's normalized. Everything is as it should be in a kind of weird forced way where we feel a little bit confined, you might say. So listen to your feelings. Your feelings will tell you if something feels right or it doesn't. Because that is what society, society or normalcy tries to do is to discredit your feelings. So, oh, you're just magical thinking. No, magical thinking is my heart's desire. What do you mean magical thinking? I want reality to be how I feel it should be. This is, this is not thinking that it is like that. That's wishful thinking. It, it is not deluded thinking. Wishful thinking is I recognize what my desires are, which means I am motivated, and thus I have a goal. And thus, you know, and, and I'm also realistic enough to know that to reach that goal, I need to traverse a territory which can be a minefield. And so I am self-aware of what that territory is. And this is, I would say common sense, but our common sense is out the window. It's down the rabbit hole. There is no common sense anymore. Who knows what the hell that is? But it is good sense. It is sense that is useful. It is useful sense. It is pragmatic sense. So there are words now that we may have to set aside, like common sense. Common sense may not be where we want to be. So sit back, relax, and take advantage of the conditioning. We are conditioned to be spectators in a world going to hell. So that's okay. Because, you know, I, I wrote something on my Facebook page and, and you know, somebody replied, oh, you know, well, you should not judge it and maybe you should, you know, what, well, actually this person was much more neutral about it. 
uh, to her credit, about what I do is basically sit back and observe and I don't judge. You know? But it's like, yes, I'm promoting that too. I say yes, in this case, sit back and observe. However, observation is not passivation, okay? Because you have to be very, very careful as you observe that you do not become a spectator of existence. You are not a spectator of existence. That's denial. You are a participant. And sometimes the participant can sit back, observe, while being aware of themselves. Observation, however, is not the right word. Observation is uh, a distancing of reality that leads to alienation, and thus you can be separated and insulated and isolated and controlled. Or you can be separated so you don't interfere with attempts to control the reality that surrounds you. I would say participatory awareness. So if you are afraid of physical action, sit back and don't just watch the show because again, do what the system is doing in some ways. You can take advantage of something like that, where it tries to immerse us in a, in a lie, immersive reality, you know, like virtual reality, you're immersed in it. Oh, this is just filling me up, it's everywhere, you know, it's just the great whatever, or the, the, oh, the exciting thing. Immerse yourself in your awareness, in the awareness of, of what you see and whatever. So it's affecting your feelings. And so you completely affirm what you are feeling, but the interpretation of that feeling is that's what requires clarity, that's what requires reason to understand. And normally, you, you, there's nothing to understand. The feelings are you. You know, the feelings are more us than thoughts are. Thoughts are projected things. They can be programmed and repro reprogrammed. You cannot program feelings. You can stimulate to cause feelings because we are designed or structured to respond a certain way when we're in pain or we're in pleasure. You know, this is who we are. It's our, it's our structure. It's our physicality. It's our embodiment. That's what the conspiracy is after. That's what transhumanism. That's why transhumanism is the religion of the so-called establishment. Because this, are the one thing that keeps certain crazies from ultimate power is human embodiment and the resources of human embodiment, not the other world, not the transcendent, not some divine on a throne or the ETs in some other realm. It is human embodiment, and this is your treasure. And this is why sitting back is not distancing yourself. Observing really is not observing. It is self-aware participation because you are immersed in it. It cannot go away and will not go away. You are in a rabbit hole, and you do not have to dig yourself out. What you do is expand the space and expand the space and expand the space, and they tell you, that, oh, it's going to collapse. Well, let it collapse. Because in the end, what they say is always a lie in there. And I say they, I mean anybody who is after, who is designing a future that is really alien to, to collective human interests, and even individual human interests, this is not in their interests, really, as human beings. You know, this is a death wish. It is a cancer. It is power lust compensating for something, and it's not a small penis or or somebody who some guy somebody said on, on Facebook who, whose mother didn't suckle them enough or at all. You know, we can't trivialize it like that. This is far deeper. In fact, I would say the one reason that I really don't believe in aliens, you know, as they are presented as physical beings and really fast the tin cans that flying around and the technologies and all of this is because look we have a pathology sentient organisms have a pathology and this pathology is psychopathy psychopathy is a result of our hyper aware cognitive potential let's put it that way so human beings come from these primates that are basically passive types you know they're not really violent for the most part they're peaceful they're omnivorous, you know, they're not that territorial, they don't go around, you know, they're not predators, for example. Now you take a predator and you give them cognition and the ability, their instincts will flare up 
and they will start predating, oh, I can eat everything. I can just do this all my big herd, you know. Or you can take an omnivore, or a, not an omnivore, but a, a herbivore whose instinct is to reproduce. They just say, oh, let's just un unlimited reproduction. Just, you know, fill it up, eat up everything, even though they know better. Because somewhere in there, the psychopath will have, even herbivores have a, a kind of system of the alpha male or the matriarch, you know, so you're going to have a power structure even there if they are sentient. So they develop technology, you know, without the ability to harmonize this possibility of psychopathy because biologically, let's say, DNA cannot handle too much thinking, uh, but maybe it's evolving. So we're wondering, why is all this happening? Well, let's say the universe wants to develop intelligent life because intelligent life is a cool thing. There's a lot of things you can do with intelligent life. Everything can benefit. We have epigenetics, for example, and the epigenetic factors usually, and most beings, depend on the environment or how the animal interacts, or maybe the group soul of the animal. Maybe there's intelligence on one level, but individual concentrated intelligence with a little organic fucking receptor here that may not be feasible. So concentrated individual intelligence may be good for the universe or good for everything. So I'm putting it in quasi-materialistic terms because there are a lot of quasi-materialistic and materialistic, even spiritual people think this way somehow. So it's a reasonable way of thinking. In any case, that's just all whatever you might say, speculation. It doesn't matter. What matters is our response. So again, the theme is responsibility the ultimate the other um, shall we say title could have been responsibility in the rabbit hole or able to respond in the rabbit hole instead of just screaming or, or running around in circles or pushing away everything or choosing a pet peeve uh, or a pet uh, conspiracy or a, a pet problem or just looking at it right here because that's all you can handle sit back and get used to expanding your vision you don't have to just focus on the negative. You don't have to freak, focus on the positive. You don't have to freak out about the negative, you know, because you can have an intention of doing something. But before you do something, you need to stand firm. So you need to become stronger. So I urge you to become stronger in your heart and in your mind. All you have to do is ask for it and pay attention. Something Ron says a lot, you know, pay attention. So, and, and paying attention, again, you're not paying anything. You're not giving up anything. You are immersing yourself in your own capacity. Awareness. Awareness, yes. Awareness is very, very important. It's one thing that anybody who wants to control you is going to try to manipulate. So take it back. Before you take back anything else, take back awareness. And I shall let that be uh, my final, you know, verbal expulsion, shall we say, for this particular video. So thank you once again for listening, and uh, namaste, peace be unto you, as they say, and uh, I'm not even, I don't mean we are all one, that depends on you and how you do things. Awareness is everything at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Aristo, and namaste.